Hi folks, welcome. Today is the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and I'm so happy to be coming to you from the St. Rita Shrine here in Chicago. And I hope you are doing well. Let's continue to pray for all those on our prayer list, all those who have asked us to pray. Pray for peace, pray for vocations, pray for the, the guidance of the Spirit at the Synod of Bishops. And we pray most importantly that we will follow Jesus the way he wants us to follow him. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Are you not concerned with anyone's opinion? For you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the, censor, the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. They handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus is so wise. These folks, so many times in the scripture stories, they want to try to trip up Jesus. And he never lets them have the upper hand. Because one, he's always telling the truth. Two, he has the truth. Three, he is the truth. And so you can't skip him up. You can't trip him up because he is the truth. And you can't trip up the author of truth when it comes to the truth. But they do it anyways. They think they're going to do it. And you know what, they're not. And so, in today's gospel, when they're trying to trip up Jesus, and he calls them hypocrites, what are you doing? And he uses that famous example, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. This Wednesday on the 25th, in the Augustinian calendar, we celebrate one of my favorite Augustinian saints, and that is St. John Stone. St. John was an Augustinian of the English province who lived at the time of Henry VIII in the 1500s. We know nothing about Father John, Father John Stone, until he said no. We know nothing about him, except he was an Augustinian priest we think he was a theologian, and it was at the time that Henry VIII wanted to get a divorce, and he wanted to divorce his wife because he wanted male heirs, and he was only getting girls. Now, we can laugh at Henry VIII today because we know that now through the study of science, it's the male who determines the sex of the child. And so, Henry VIII, you're blaming all your wives when here it was your fault all along. So, Henry VIII was the head of the church, or no, I'm sorry, was the head of England. England was a very, very, very Catholic country. And then Henry goes to the chaplain of the, of the court, of the royal court, and says, I want a divorce. He says, well, what do you want a divorce for? He says, well, my wife isn't giving me any boys and I want a boy. And the priest said, no, nah, I can't do it. It's not good enough reason to get a divorce and an annulment. Goes to the bishop. Bishop tells him the same thing. Sorry, no, it doesn't work. Goes to the cardinal. Sorry, it doesn't work. Goes to the pope. And the pope says, sorry. No. When you are the king, what's the one word you never want to hear? No. But Henry VIII was being told no by the people who had the truth. By the people who knew because they were following Jesus' law. Well, 
when you're the king, you don't want to hear no. And he kept hearing no. So he says, fine. I will now declare myself the head of the church in England and everyone must follow me and no longer will we follow the Pope. And so he sent his henchmen around to the churches, the convents, the monasteries, the friaries to have everyone sign the act of supremacy saying that Henry VIII was now the head of the church in Rome and not the Pope. So they went around and they had people sign and many people did and there were many people that didn't. Two of the more famous martyrs of that time were St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More. John Fisher being a cardinal, Thomas More being a layman, a chancellor, a lawyer, and both said no, and they were both put to death. Well, they come to the Augustinian friary, and all the Augustinians but one signed it. And the one who didn't was John Stone, Father John Stone. I'm sure the others who did sign it just said, just, John, just sign it. We know the Pope's in charge. This guy's a nutcase. It'll all come back. He said, I can't do it. The truth prevailed. He was thrown in the Tower of London prison, and he was tortured and eventually put to death. And John Stone, we know nothing about him until he said no. And he turned that no into a yes of following Jesus through martyrdom. And it was in 1970 that Pope Saint John Paul, uh, Pope Paul VI, Saint Paul VI now, he canonized Saint John Stone, and I believe it was 39 other English martyrs. They were the English martyrs who were all canonized in 1970. And so John Stone is an Augustinian brother to me, Augustinian to us, who we knew nothing about until he said no. But boy, he turned his no into the most supreme yes you can have, following Jesus. So friends, how, as we celebrate John Stone this week, can we say yes? How can we follow? Just like Jesus was being tripped up, and they said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, how is John Stone helping us to truly follow what Jesus wants? So let's ask St. John Stone's intercession Let's never give up. Let's always keep Jesus our center. Friends, let's have a great week. How good it is that we are here. Thank you for being with me. Let's continue to pray. Never give up. And let us ask St. John Stone to pray for us. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.